Okay. So I've got the shopsmith set up. And a lot of guys, you know, this is one of those machines that guys tend to, uh, they either love these things or they hate them. And I'm one of the guys that loves these things. Um, part of that might be because my dad had one growing up. My father-in-law owns one of these machines. Um, they're really accurate. They're well-built. They're made in Ohio. Uh, they're uh, a good machine. And uh, this is a 1954 model. And what I've got in it is a Forstner bit. And I've got it set up to stop about a half inch from going through. So I've got a depth stop set on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this bit and I'm going to drill through here. And I'm going to drill all the corner areas out with this one. And then I'll move on to a bigger Forstner built to hog out more of the material. And then we'll just use a chisel to finish it up and clean it up. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and start drilling.
not too terribly bad. The one area that I'm not in love with is right in here where this screw is going to go because this is kind of a hollow through here. So what I'll end up doing, I'll end up making a block that goes behind here to fill in that space. And that'll give this a little more support. That might end up being a weak area. Um, although we've got a lot of space back in here, which normally you wouldn't have in a P-Base. I can see here that I my glue joint looks well. It looks like I got some good squeeze out. So I think uh, we're good to go ahead and start on the next part of this, which would be cleaning all of this up. And then I'll end up making a block here and we'll glue that in. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to try to clean all of this up. And I'm just going to use a uh, carving gouge. I've got a uh, chisel and a knife. And hopefully these are the tools that'll that'll get this done. If not, I got a big selection of different chisels and things that we can employ if we need to. So I'm just going to go ahead and start here. Luckily, this wood really carves nice. Sometimes it's good to kind of go in at an angle and shear the wood off rather than driving straight down. Sometimes you can chip it out doing it the other way. Go backwards. I try to be a little bit controlled because it's pretty easy to get carried away and make a mess. side looking a little better. So here, I'm going to switch to a knife because I don't want to, that's, that's hollow underneath there and I really don't want to split it.
chisel here. Cutting across grain. It's a little harder. I know this is probably pretty boring to watch, and I apologize for it. But I don't know what else to do. Okay, not too bad. The only thing we got to do is I need, I need, like I said before, I need to glue. I don't know if you can see this, but it's hollow under this area because that's where the original route was at. And this boss right here, where the pickguard screw goes, is very thin. So I'm going to add another piece of wood underneath that to, to kind of strengthen that up. So that's what we'll do next. Okay. So what I've done, and I did this off camera, um, just took a piece of scrap birch, and it's from the same piece of wood that I plugged this with. What I did was I just made this little block, and it fits in the body. I'll go ahead and put it in. Just... Just tuned it so it just fits in like that and what I'll do is I'll end up gluing that I'm gonna go ahead and glue that in with some uh, white glue and uh, I'll let that set up and that'll give me plenty of meat to put the pit guard screw in this area on a P base is always a weak area and in fact on my other P base I've broken I don't know, three or four pit guards in my life. Um, because, you know, you, you've got your pit guard on there, and you've just got a, you've got three screws holding this plastic, and there's the jack. And if you're a little rambunctious, or, uh, you know, depends on, <laughs> depends on your personality, I guess. But uh, when I was definitely younger, I was a little more, ram way more rambunctious than I am now. But uh, I had broken, cracked that, you know, where the, where the jack was in there, uh, typically unintentionally. I don't think I ever intentionally broke one, but uh, you need, we need to make sure that there's plenty of meat to screw that pit guard into. And that's why I'm doing that. On a normal basis, obviously, you'd never have to do this, but, you know, since we're converting this body from a rear route to a front route, you know, this is one of the things we run into. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll put some glue on this thing. And then we'll see if we can get it in there. All right. Don't want to fool around too much because this stuff starts to grab and that's the end of it. I don't like it yet. There we go. Okay. That's not too bad. So you can see we've got a little glue squeeze out here and there, but Oh, we'll just go ahead and let that dry up. That's not going to hurt a thing. So the only thing I might, eh, it might be okay. I might have to add a little epoxy to this one edge, but it actually, it'll probably be just fine. So, all right. I'll see you back at the next phase of this project. Thanks. All right. I'm back 
on the project here and I'm out in my other shop and <clears throat> you can see I've got the base primered white and we'll go ahead I'll flip it around and see what the front looks like so there we go it's been sanded down with a 320 and originally I was going to paint it a cream colored uh, I have some leftover paint here from a tractor project but I think I'm going to try this a dupla color that you can get at a, an auto store which is a lacquer which is you know what my other base is it's a lacquer and the color is actually looks from the cap to be similar so I'm gonna basically spray several coats of this on here and then I'll let it sit for three or four days and maybe by it's it's Monday today so maybe by Friday I'll uh, spray a bunch of coats of clear on it and then I'll just let it cure for I don't know two or three weeks and then we'll wet sand and buff it and that this this body part of the project will be done and I just got to come up with some money to buy the uh, pickups and the, the bridge and the tuning machines and then we hopefully we'll be able to put it all together so the next time you see it it should be green which should be right now all right so now we've got her painted up uh, this is a Ford color um, it's really close to the uh, ocean turquoise at my other base is and it's all done in lacquer it has about six coats of paint and probably five or six coats of clear and there's the back kind of hard to see let me see if we can hang it up so there's the back it definitely is going to need wet sanded and buffed so it's just going to have to sit for uh, probably a couple of weeks before we can do that and we'll wet sand it with some 800 grit sandpaper and uh, then we'll buff the whole thing out and it should look pretty darn good and then we'll be able to continue on with this build so that's where we're at thanks